The Reserve Bank will prepare to undergo its biggest shake-up in decades. A sweeping review into the bank's structure and objectives recommended a range of reforms to be implemented from July next year. They include establishing a new board of monetary policy experts whose main role will be to set the cash rate, reducing the number of rate decisions each year and improving the bank's communication with the public. The government has accepted all of the review's 51 recommendations. A short time ago, I spoke with one of the nation's leading economists, Ross Garno, who recently gave a presentation on the RBA at the Melbourne Economic Forum. I began by asking Professor Garno for his broad assessment of the proposed overhaul of the RBA. I think its big weakness, Karen, is that it, it doesn't say much about the economics. Uh, there's some very light stuff about economic performance, about average performance of Australia being reasonably good over the last three decades. But uh, compared with our own history and compared with other developed countries, the performance has been abysmal over the last decade. And uh, I think the review should have started with a realistic assessment uh, of how the economy is going and the contribution of monetary policy to that. The biggest mistake is that from 2013 to 2019, uh, what I call the dog days uh, uh, of economic performance, uh, uh, we kept uh, monetary policy too tight. Uh, for a lot of that time, inflation was below the target range. Unemployment was almost as high at the end as it was at the beginning, although the beginning was in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. We didn't get the fall in unemployment that the United States got, that Europe and Japan got. Uh, that, that's uh, abysmal performance. Monetary policy played a big role in that. And my first uh, uh, criticism uh, is that uh, the, the review should have had more to say about that and its recommendations on change uh, should have all been built around how can we make sure that that sort of mistake doesn't happen again. When you refer to those dog days after 2013 with essentially productivity wages growth not matching even the preceding decades, it's quite stark, that comparison, isn't it? Yes, uh, in, in the 90s, uh, on the back of the reforms of the 80s and early 90s, we had uh, the, the highest productivity growth, total factor productivity in the uh, developed world. Uh, during the China resources boom, the decade that followed, roughly 2003 to 2013, uh, we, we had uh, productivity growth in the middle of the pack. Incomes kept growing quite strongly because uh, we were doing so well out of the China boom. Uh, and then in the last decade, uh, we've been right at the bottom of the pack for uh, productivity growth. Very, performing very badly uh, on unemployment uh, and uh, the pandemic uh, uh, created some complications uh, uh, that will take a while to work through uh, but uh, the period before the pandemic was a bad one for the average Australian citizen.